Hi all, I thought it would be nice to review one of the greatest games ever played one of, by one of the greatest ever players, Gary Kasparov, playing against another great player, Veselin Toplov. So this was played in the Hilgovans tournament, Weekend Z, 1999. Kasparov kicked off with e4, a very aggressive first move. Toplov chose the perk defence. So after d4 here, knight f6, knight c3, g6. Fianchetto, the bishop, incurs some risk on the dark squares. Kasparov's plan is very logical here in relation to the dark squares. Bishop e3. A very common idea to later back up with queen d2 and bishop h6, trying to exchange off this key defensive piece. Bishop g7, queen d2, and now black doesn't want to rush to castle kingside here necessarily. Black plays c6, a very common plan to try and generate some queenside counterplay with moves like b5 and b4, to try and hit white hard in the center. White now reinforces the e4 pawn with f3 which is dual purpose as well, stopping knight g4s as well, reinforcing against b5, b4, and also potentially supporting g4. That's often useful. Black now plays b5, and now we have knight g e2, knight b d7. Black is not in any rush to castle kingside. He's up to something. Veselin Topolov has an idea here for king safety. After bishop h6, Kasparov is not waiting any longer with castling queenside. Both sides are not committing their king for the moment. Topolov takes on h6, inviting the queen to h6. Is it potentially dangerous there? Well, Topolov played bishop b7. On queen g7, there might just be rook g8 to evict the queen. For the moment, the queen is not supported in any way by other pieces. So we just have another move designed against blacks position and play a3 to try and discourage b4. We now have this move e5 where black is striking hard at white center. White castles queen side. Finally one of the kings has committed to the queen side. Queen e7 keeping that strong point on e5 and also preparing to castle queen side. King b1 which vacates the c1 square. That could be useful for a knight maneuver like this. a6, as though c5 later might be on the cards. So strengthening b5 in advance of c5. Knight c1, still looking now at this knight b3 to a5 idea. Black castles queen side, knight b3. And now Veselin Topolov thinks this is the time to try and liberate the bishop. First, he resolves the tension in the center. E takes d4 is played. Rook takes d4. It gives white a bit of frontal pressure, though, on the d-file for the moment. But now c5 unleashes the bishop. The rook goes back to d1. So white's rooks, for the moment, are not connected. Blacks are. We have now a move knight b6, which potentially is quite dangerous for knight c4s. And also d5 is now more supported g3. An interesting move here. Bishop h3 check may be a very useful resource, especially if d5 is played. We might have queen f4 and both of these pieces looking down these two key diagonals. King b8 getting out of the way of bishop h3 being check. Knight a5 trying to win that important defensive light square bishop. The bishop retreats though to a8. Of course if it goes to c8 then there's a disaster immediately with knight c6 check. So the bishop goes to a8. And now we have this bishop h3, which looks at c8. Is black discouraged when playing d5? Is this queen f4 dangerous? Well, black did play d5. It seems to be the logical break in the position. Queen f4 check, and the king has got a7. And now rook h e1. Kasparov has an idea. He doesn't want this knight to be entirely passive, going back to e2 if d4 is played. Now after d4, instead we see Kasparov risking a kind of dislocated pawn. He plays the move knight d5. He's relying on a tempo gain, a very important tempo gain, to hit the queen here. So he's hitting the queen and the knight on b6. And also this queen is looking at that very dangerous c7 square. Black took with the b knight. E takes hitting the queen and it's with check. 
So something has to be done about that. Queen d6, so wanting an exchange of queens, and if black gets that, this dislocated pawn will drop and black will be much better. But here is one of the shocking, most shocking moves in chess history ever played. I wonder if you can spot it, if you'd like to pause the video. I'll give you five seconds, starting from now, to just to pause the video and see if you can work out what was played here. Okay, a remarkable move. Rook takes d4. Now, it becomes clear here that if queen takes, actually, then rook takes f4 is very useful, hitting the knight and also the pawn underneath it. So knight takes, rook takes f7. It would be great for white. There's also, there's an amazing resource that was found in post-game research of this game that black uh, didn't have to accept the rook sacrifice here. Black could have played, this is a computer mode, king b6, and it seems as though black might have been okay here just to play king b6, less risky than the game continuation. That's a subject for another time though. So in the game, Kasparov apparently looked up at Kasparov Sorry, Topolov looked up at Kasparov and, and sort of knew he was part of something really great here, this game, if he did accept the rook sacrifice. But he didn't see what was the refutation. Okay, his king would become um, under a bit of exposure, but to what extent? So he accepted the rook sacrifice. C takes d4. There isn't too much else if king b6 is not found in any case. So here... C takes d4, accepting the rook sacrifice. And now a fantastic introduction now to king safety here. So white plays in this position, another remarkable move. A series of absolutely fantastic moves in this game. So what is the next fantastic move? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Okay, rook e7 check, a drag and drop type tactic, putting the queen on e7. So if queen d4, there's no queen b6. Let's see this. So if king, if queen takes, queen takes d4, there's no defense with queen b6. The king steps back. Remember, we've got c8 guarded. Queen b6 is crushing here. So the king can't step to c8. And here, knight c6 check is mating or winning the queen, but mating is stronger. So, fantastic move, a drag and drop tactic, rook e7 check. We have the start of a remarkable king chase down the board. Queen takes d4 check, sacrificing the knight on a5. So for the moment, Gasparov is playing with three pieces against five. He's two pieces down for the moment. But pawns can also act as attacking pieces. Kasparov has written that many times. And here, b4 check is an attacking pawn. King a4. Queen c3. And there's not such a subtle threat here. Queen b3 is mating. So that has to be parried immediately. Queen takes d5. Protecting against queen b3. Now rook a7. Fred thing mating like this with rook takes a6. A very desperate position here. What does black do about this? If something like rook d6, actually then king b2, for example, and then we've still got this queen b3 idea, horrible idea, with c takes mating. And if queen d4, we've got rook takes a6 winning the queen, or just taking the queen, even better. And then we've got rook takes a6 checkmate. So the king is also helping here in some variations to mate the black king. So in this position, Topolov finds a resourceful defense, bishop b7, giving up bishop to protect a6, to try and encourage white to lose time here and not have such strong coordination. Rook takes b7. So if white gets another move, he'll want to play king b2 and queen b3. We have here the move queen c4. Note this f6 knight was also attacked here. A very difficult position indeed. Queen takes f6 is played. 
King takes a3 is the black king escaping. It's undermining white's pawn on b4. Well, queen takes a6 check. Very precise calculation now is demonstrated. King takes b4 and a fantastic move in the circumstance. Well, the only move, Kasparov is playing only moves to sustain his attack. He's weakened b5 a bit. It's only the queen and the king protecting b5 here. His next move is also another fantastic move in its own right. Can you spot what he played? If I give you five seconds here. Okay, c3 check. So if queen takes c3, that's another drag and drop tactic, queen takes b5 will be mating. For example like this, eventually mating with rook takes a5. So king takes, but now another key check and an outrageous looking one. Can you spot it? There's a very good check move here. Okay, queen a1 check. Dragging the king somewhere very awkward. If king d3, bishop f1 is very strong looking. So king d2 is played. Queen b2 check and the king seems to find some safety now with king d1. Because Brav here has to play the only move to sustain the attack. Can you guess what he played? Another kind of drag and drop tactic designed against the black queen which is currently protecting the c2 square. If I give you five seconds here, what would you play with white? Okay, bishop f1. So if taking, then there's queen c2 check, king e1, rook e7 is mating. So a fantastic move, bishop f1. Rook d2 is played in return but now this seemingly great move which seems to refute bishop f1 is refuted itself with can you guess what white played another amazing move rook d7 pinning the rook to the king so still holding that attack on the queen now black in this position is forced to lose material if queen takes, we mate on d2. Black is in trouble now. It's been spelled out. Rook takes d7. Bishop takes c4. And unfortunately, the queen is also eyeing the rook here. So white is finally ahead on material after queen takes h8. Still a little bit of danger here with the pawn potentially coming down. But queen a8 is the first very accurate move. c3, queen a4 check, king e1. Now f4, black is not doing anything now after f4. f5, king c1 taking the d1 square, rook d2. So maybe taking here is useful, but queen a7 spells out that queen g1 check will be the reply if rook takes h2. And here, Topolov resigned. Both players here created a masterpiece on the chessboard, an immortal game, one of the greatest games of chess ever played. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.